Hey guys, I have an IMT48 here with another episode of Ultimate Tip 4. And we're going to be starting off where we left off, which is level 26, and throw away the key. So we start by getting a yellow key, and obviously that gets you killed. You have to get the blue key and then figure out how to ditch the yellow key to be able to win the level. So the defining feature here is really this symmetrical block arrangement. There's not much to it, but I think it's pretty neat. I like it. I'm mostly alone in that opinion. So I don't remember what to do here. Um, do I teleport? Or do I go over here? I don't think I can get all the way over. Um trap the pink ball, but that doesn't seem right. So I'm gonna teleport, and that just takes me over there. Wait, no, if I... Oh, wait, no, I see it, I see it. Good job, passed me. Tripped me up. <laughs> um, so if I'm thieved, the only question is, do I want to go there? No, I'm gonna assume there's probably a recessed wall under that. This allows me to slide. And now that I have the um, all the chips, I can clear the sockets, get that central bomb blown up, and what's down here? Okay, so now I just need to hit a tank button, and then I should be able to get to the exit. So I can burn my yellow key. Suction boots. Okay. See, that's something that I don't like these days. I don't think that ruins the level, but it certainly doesn't help its case. So this is Flaming Prison. Sorry about that minor interruption. Um, there's actually a huge random mechanism controlling these, but... Sometimes it clones frequently, sometimes it's pretty sparse. And I think this is a pretty nifty level, just with how much is going on, without actually having all that much going on. There's all those bugs on the side. There's all this other stuff. And we blow up the tanks, we can then head up here. I just like the aesthetics of having everything surrounded by fire, honestly. I think that's really cool, and the room layout has some nice potential to it. Okay, so I need the green key. I can get the green key, which gives me this block. Which gives me a trap button, which gives me this block, which lets me set up a partial post. Hi, Tyler. So that's Flaming Prison, this is Cell Block D, which is... So Flaming Prison was meant to be the start of like a little story type segment in the set. Where it, like you start out in a prison and then you're in another part of the prison and then... Oh look, I got bold. <laughs> and then you escape from the prison. It's a little bit silly, and this level is more of a... It's honestly built as more of a challenge to see if I could build a level like this than to actually make a good level, to be honest. I just started with the uh, lines and went from there. So I'm pretty sure if I do this... Yep, I heard a tick, which lets me through here. Yeah, I know. MS only boosting path. Yeah, that's Escapades. It's not a terribly complicated level, but I think it's interesting enough. So, the long and lonely road. Now, let's talk about path levels real quick. I don't see anything inherently wrong with a, with a uh, strict linear path, but I don't think this is how you should do it. The cool part is this uh, little road crossing, but honestly, this level's kind of bland. 
Yes, that's completely pointless. I like sections like that with the blocks. I like this part here. Whoa! And suddenly run. That's interesting too, but I can see that tripping someone up while they're just trying to get reacclimated. i take this walk through, and now you've got this this time-killing toggle path. It's okay. It's just, I could have done so much better with this idea. And then right at the end is something a little mean. Just a little bit, but not too bad. So Dry Canyon, this is a level named after a Spyro 1 level. And I may have just... Bummer. I thought I cooked it, but I hadn't. And the fact that I wanted a fiery theming... Oops. And also have all this other stuff going on. With the uh, block walls, which, if you know me, if anybody knows me, they will know that one of my favorite things to do in a level is just block walls. Like, if they're pushable, that's all the better. So I think my best level in Ultimate Chip 2 follows that. And this is another thing I found I like quite a bit. Tank clone machines. Uh, you'll be seeing another fireball redirection puzzle under that <laughs> later, so. Uh, minor spoilers, I guess, if you've never played the set. Yeah, let's just get the walls toggling. And deal with the bugs, because obviously you needed a section of bugs in a fire-themed level. And, oh no, there's one chip missing. Oh wait, it's right there. And that's Dry Canyon. It's, in, it's a pretty solid level. Nothing special. So Boulder Dash was me realizing I don't make a lot of completely open levels. I should make a completely open level. And so I made a completely open level that's just random ball dodging. This part is actually kind of tricky to do. in a way that a lot of levels just don't uh, dare to make a dodging difficult. I mean, it's just a simple pattern, but with the way it's set up, it's not the easiest thing in the world. So this pattern's just a joke. I'm not going to go through the inside. And then obviously we have this Bounce City style ball stack. Which probably could have stood to have one less in it. Don't dally too much in the open space because, of course, there's exactly one tile in the entire level. That hint tile. Where the only thing you can see is the open space. There's no other tiles visible. If that hint wasn't there, the screen would be all floor. Which is an interesting touch. So reconnecting internet, I think, is pretty lame, actually. I mean, the, the spiral's cool and all, but I don't think the level plays too well. Let's go into the inside of the spiral. Look at that. <laughs> I mean, I know you can slip between the uh, walkers here, but I have never been confident enough in my ability to get the timing for that. Hey, I beat my score! That's... that's kind of cool. So this is Hypnosis. This is another one of those levels where I just... This is the Cypher level, back when Cypher levels were still a thing people did. Like, they weren't frowned on. And, well, I'm sure you can see the problem with this one. I had this idea, 
And this was an idea that I hadn't seen done. Of obviously, what if you had just a pattern of blue walls and the actual real walls made a pat made this your cipher password. And yeah, that's kind of cool. I guess. But then you end up with well, exactly this. A full map level that doesn't need to be a full map level. Like, this is a criticism I levy a lot, not just to uh, myself. Just making a level take up the entire map when it doesn't need to is probably my single biggest pet peeve in level design these days. Um, and... This just shows that everything I complain about, I fall victim to sometimes as well. Like, th some of these traps are just really hard to avoid. Like, this level could have stood to be a lot smaller, or honestly not even exist at all, because it's not really that interesting to play. Um... Either way, uh, the password it's building out starts with a C up here, then we have an M, then we had an S down in the bottom right. So whatever letter is in the bottom left corner is the second letter in the pa third letter in the password, sorry. I mean, uh, I'll, I'll give the idea credit. It's original. But let this be a lesson. Just because the idea is original does not mean the idea is good. I think it's an E. So just to try, I'm going to try a C M E S after this level, and if that takes me to, I don't know, level 100 something, then I think that was correct. If not, I'm not going to be too concerned with it, because I'm beating all the levels in this playthrough anyway. Yeah, postmodern temple. H halfway through the set. So now we have automatic coffee doors. So this is a thing that came up one day <laughs> um, during some Skype for group discussions. And I built a level about it, because of course I did. So the gist of it is um, automatic caution doors in CCLV1. Fantastic level, by the way. Stupid boulder, by the way. Um was being discussed for some reason or another. And it got abbreviated to ACD. Not only did it get abbreviated to ACD, it got abbreviated to A parentheses C D. Which is um, which on Skype, C in parentheses at the time it might not still be. I think it is. Um, is replaced with a coffee emote. Also what? No, did I mess up? What does that button even do? Bummer. Oh, I get it now. Yeah, this level's not great. The gist is you block things off because teeth are in your way otherwise. But yeah, so automatic coffee doors became a thing. It's like, I'm totally making a level named that because I can. That's what I needed to do. See, I thought that was a block cloner when I first went up there. And because of recessed walls, I didn't go for it. So as you can see, like, that's another thing. Hiding stuff under blocks. If you look at, um... My Josh CCLP4 playthrough a while back. Hiding things under blocks was one of my biggest complaints. And I fall victim to that, too. So Josh, it's nothing personal. It's just I don't. It annoys me, and I do it too. Uh, so this is fluidity. It's a pretty dumb level. I'm not even gonna pretend it's not. It is blatant boosting fodder.
I'd love to see this like played out optimally though. So JB, I know you have a good score on this. Please upload it somewhere if you ever watch this video. I'd, I'd love to see it because that, that would be really cool to watch. The level itself was pretty bad though. Um, regression is one that I think is kind of neat actually. It's just one room set up in such a way so that you start out with one room, sorry, um, one group of blocks, you use those blocks to get another group, and then another group to be able to finish the level. I like it. It's straightforward, but straightforward doesn't mean bad. Uh, I will say this level has an absolutely ridiculous bold root that I am not aware of how it works. Uh, I've tried a lot of things to find it, and I just, I haven't. Yeah, I know, I keep bringing up uh, optimizing this set. Because yeah, it can be fun to work on custom levels. And it can be fun to work on my own sometimes, even though there's often, why did I build this this way? It's like Unravel on Ice. Um, so Unravel is oh. in, oops, uh, CCLP4 as well. That was another one of the cool uh, Ultimate Shift 3 designs. And Unravel on Ice was just me putting it on ice for some reason. So I think this is the one I need to slide. And then this guy comes down. And then I can teleport. Do I push it to the teleport or do I just slide it here? I do do that. I could have checked through the teleport, honestly. That gives me the toggle button. So Unravel on Ice is nowhere near as good as the original. I don't know what I was thinking. It's just hidden mechanisms the level. Airport Security, on the other hand, is a level where I do know what I was thinking. Um, the gist of this level is honestly one of my favorite ideas. Just genuinely one of my favorite ideas. Um, if only I could remember how this part works. <laughs> Uh, the gist of it is pretty simple, though. Clear a path to pa for Chip to pass through later. That's all you do. There's thieves everywhere to kind of herd the blocks on a path, and obviously you pass back through with fire boots, because this level wouldn't really work otherwise. Um, trying to... Uh, Figure this back out. Okay, let's just drop this one here to create the nail. So when I have the fire boots, I come through here. That block gets moved out of my way. This one needs to get out of the way. And I think I go right. Up to the top. And down. Through this part. Just making sure I have the path worked out right. Okay, now I just need to make the end work. Which I can do a little bit of cheesing here. Just a little bit of cheesing. So optimizing this was actually an, an, a bit of an ordeal. Like, the execution requirement is, as you can probably guess, pretty hard. I had fun going for it, though. A lot of fun working it out. Less fun doing it, but I still enjoyed the process. Uh, as far as levels in this set go, this is one of the ones that I'm most sad didn't do well for CCLP4 voting. Anyway, Temple of the Arch Fiends. So one of the dumb theming things I did in Ultimate Chip 4 was, ooh, ooh, let's make a bunch of temple levels. So there's a bunch of temple levels. And they're all placed at, um, like, meaningful numbers. So this one is loosely based on uh, Final Fantasy IV and how there's four arch fiends. There's the fire dude, the water dude, the earth dude, and the wind lady. It, uh, I'm okay with the level. Like, it's a nifty idea with each of the individual areas. 
I, I like the bug walker interaction there. I think that's really cool. Uh, they're, most of the level is kind of meh. And I made this dumb walker cloning section. Like, it's really dumb. You'll see it in a bit. Um, yeah. So, the temple levels, as I mentioned a moment ago, let's go this way first, do the walkers, are all on just even numbers. So, 40, 50, 75, 100, and 125, I think, are all temples. Why? I have no idea why, honestly. Alright, so I was nice enough to have this close off the uh, passageway. So you set up a partial post, part one. And now we go off to the left side, which has the earth puzzle. This is an actual puzzle. So another thing I like doing is making original block shuffling puzzles. This one's not very difficult, but it can be messed up if you're not careful. This one's also pretty easy. Yeah, it's very rare that I will adapt someone else's block pushing puzzle into one of my levels. I just want to make my own. Like, they're not easy to build well, but it is rewarding to make a tricky puzzle that stumps someone. And if you only adapt existing puzzles, they never get to use Tiff's talent mechanics. And partial post to the exit. So moving on, order of the blue the order of the blue circle. Um Bummer. Yeah, let's not do that. I'm just gonna go up here. Why? Because there's a secret hint in this level. I don't recall another secret hint between those two. Between um, the one for 30 and this one for 50. Which is XRTY. But yeah, you can just break out there. That central path is not best for aesthetics. So this is a partial post themed level. I mean, as far as level ideas go, it's not a bad one. As far as executions go, I wouldn't even say it's a bad one. It's just that, um... It is kind of easy to screw up, and the fact that the rooms are, are as small as they are and kind of disjointed does weaken the level a bit. So now I have flippers, so I can hit this button again, go up here again. And this is the room I think is the weakest, just because there's not anything interesting going on there. This one's really weak, too. Like it, This is the kind of level that just started strong and got really weak. Plus, you have to gamble on a green key over there. <laughs> Granted, by process of elimination, there really can't be anything else, but I still am not a fan of that anymore. Do I have that button held down? Yeah, I must. Yeah, that ending's a little weird, but not that weird. So Predator versus Prey is another level that I'm really happy with uh, in terms of simple gameplay. It's kind of the spiritual predecessor to Seeing Red in Ultimate Tip 5 and later CCLP4 uh, in that you're just dodging teeth in a maze. But in my opinion, dodging teeth in a maze is about the m among the most interesting gameplay you can get with uh, dodging. Because you have moments of just rushing fast, and you have moments of being slow and methodical. And they just intersperse as you're playing. It's just really fun. Anyway, anti-disruptive caves. Leave everything exactly as you found it. So this is another level that made it into CCLP4, just because of, I think honestly, because of the concept more than anything else. It's pretty early on. I think it's as early as it is here. If not a little earlier. 
And this is something I uh, saw, I think, Josh do. It might have been, um, I think it might have been Marcus, actually. But he loaded three blocks into the room on the right, which I actually didn't know you could do until I saw that. Yeah, you just put all the blocks back where they started. This was one of those levels where the idea uh, came first, and I was like, this is such a cool idea, I'm building it. Without much consideration for, wait, how do I make this terribly interesting? Um, and yet, it still kind of worked out okay, just because it eases you into the concept, gives you a tricky puzzle, tricky-ish puzzle, and then just gr eases back off a bit. I wish I could have done that a little nicer, but the limit on trap connections was definitely a problem. So here's Disruptive Caves, which was, ha ha ha, what if I uh, mirrored it? mirrored the idea. So the entire gist of this level is there's a pile of blocks in your way. Find a way through it. There are worse ideas out there, but that ki this kind of level needs to be very carefully uh, measured. And I'm going to hopefully get this on the first try. But there's a lot of cases here where I'm not sure where I'm supposed to go. Okay, so this one gives me a bit of looking on where I'm supposed to go. And we have a bit of a block checker board. So we're trying to get to this section up here. If I go like that, that won't work. This will. Because I can push this block through. I have no options but to wedge here. Which way I push that block doesn't matter. I can go up, but that doesn't help me. I'm going to assume wedging here is fine. Where can I go from here? I can go either left down or down left. I'm not sure which is the right choice. I think I'm going to go left down because that looks more promising. Gives me a lot of free space. So there's the exit and I can see this entire room. Let's plot a path. Nice. So I, uh, so it, I was able to get through that on the first try. I don't know if that's because I remembered how to deal with most of it or if that's because I was acutely aware when designing how cheap that could end up being. So here's a level that I think is kind of stupid. Because this is another level that uses the tired, tired design trope of let's do the same thing four times. And it doesn't bring anything new to the table with those times. With all the chips collected, let's pick a corner. Yeah, it's, it's just boosting hell. <laughs> now, I think I've got time for one more level right now, which is Old Abandoned, Old Abandoned Maze. Um, of all things, this is actually referencing something. And I'm not going to say what the reference is here, but if you get it, good for you. If you don't get it, um, you can check on PyGuy's site what it's referencing. Because I, I do say there. But yeah, it's a double maze with toggle walls. I made a lot of mazes. I am a firm believer that you do need a really strong balance of uh, levels in a set for it to be a good set. But I may have gone a little too far on the mazes in this one. <laughs> I have nothing against mazes, but mazes, I think, should have something else going for them. I say, even though I recently built a couple mazes that are just straight mazes. Um, even if that's something is just aesthetics. This level's aesthetics are, hey, cool, dirt and gravel is nice, I guess. But other than that, it's just kind of there. 
I see why Josh's favorite uh, ultimate chip was five now, though. And I'm understanding that a lot better now. Because I've, I've always held it as four. But at replaying this, it might have to be five. Though I think that uh, whatever I, whenever I next uh, release is going to be my new favorite. Just because I've, I'm really proud of a lot of the stuff I've put together uh, recently. And I'm excited to be able to share that with everyone. Uh, once I finish the project, anyway. So yeah, my quote secret project from a while ago that I'm sure has been guessed by a few members of the community and they're just not spouting off what it is to everyone. Um, is coming along pretty nicely. Mm. With any luck, I'll be able to uh, release it by the end of February, but it might take until uh, mid-March or early April to actually get it done. You never know with level designing. Sometimes you just get a burst of inspirations, sometimes you don't. And I tried to be thorough here, but I am so lost right now. And this is one of those levels where I didn't fill the whole map, so imagine if I did. Let's go over. Okay, now I see a chip. I see two chips. Can I get this one by going down this path? Yes, I can! So, yeah, I'm really, really looking forward to seeing what people think of that project. I actually have an editor window open in the background right now that has my uh, levels up. I'm at, at the time of this recording, I'm at 112 of a planned 149. And it's a CC1 set. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> so now that I've got all the chips here, I can probably go finish. So I'm still making some really swift progress on, through this set. I, I do expect that to slow down. Because the levels do start getting longer. Eventually. But complexity-wise, they are not that bad yet. So we'll move on to as per the mutations in the next level, or the next video. So fun fact about this level, it's busted. I couldn't fix the bust. Oops. <laughs> Alright, until next time, later.